So far, every subquery we've seen has been a simple subquery, meaning they can execute by itself. But there are also correlated subqueries. Correlated meaning that the subquery is correlated or depended upon or refers to some kind of data or column in the outer query. So to set this up, let's switch over to CHA2. And I have some code I want to go ahead and execute just so that the base camps have regions we can do some comparisons. Just to examine the data, the location matrix here shows which regions for customers match up for which regions for tours, just to show that there are some matches in the data that we just set up. So now to get into these correlated subqueries, we're going to try to answer the question of who lives near or in the same region as a base camp. And to do this, we're going to use the exists operator for the where clause. The way the exists works is that it runs the subquery, and if a row is returned, then the exists is considered to be true. And the correlation of it is that the subquery actually refers to C as one of the tables. But C is not part of the subquery. C is part of the outer query. So in the simple subquery, the simple subquery ran once. The answer was returned to the outer query. The outer query was executed, and then we got the result. The opposite happens with a correlated subquery. Here, the outer query executes first, and then there's a row, and then for every row in the outer query, the inner query or the subquery is executed. And in this case, the subquery is able to reference the customer region for every time it's executed. Even though this is how we logically think about the execution of a correlated subquery, physically it doesn't happen this way inside of SQL Server. So while we might think, oh man, this is going to be a terrible slow query, in fact, I've seen cases where correlated subqueries just scream in performance and perform better than other ways of stating the same query. One other thing to point out about this is that it's okay here to say select star or to select asterisk. Normally that would be a bad practice, but all we're doing here is looking for the presence of a row. And if a row is present, the exists is true, so select star is actually the best way to write this query. So we're still in the CHA2 database, and we can execute this query, and it'll return everyone who lives in the same region as their base camp because all we're doing is comparing region to region from base camp to customer, this same query could have been written as a join. In fact, you'll find that most joins can be written as correlated subqueries, but there will be times when you find that you're doing something so complex that the correlated subquery is the best way and the only way to write it. This is that same query as a join. Here's a more complex query that uses the where exists. And this query tries to answer who has attended an event someplace in their home region. So we have to look at what is the home region of the customer, what's the home region of the event, and then compare those. And then to show the same query as a join, maybe it's my personal preference. But if I can write it as a join, I prefer joins.